Good morning. Hi. <laughs> yeah, like uh, Steve said, that was lovely. I have been here a long time. If you don't know me, my name is Brioni, actually. I introduce myself as Bree because it's easier for people to remember. But my name's Brioni. I do like my name. Yeah, don't, don't think I don't. So <laughs> I'm just going to start off in um, prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we wait on you. We wait on your word and we thank you for your word. Thank you for this morning and that you go out and you speak to us. I thank you for this message that I can deliver that is from you, that is your word. It goes out to the people and I pray that you'll be softening our hearts, that we all may hear what you have to say. You are our provider, Lord, and I thank you for the work that you're doing this morning. Lord, may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, this morning I'm going to have a bit of a congregational um, participation. Can I have hands up if you think you're a creative person, if you feel like that? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yep, that's better than I was expecting. I was expecting five people, honestly, so I'm a little bit happy with that. Um, hands up if you feel the exact opposite of that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. That's all right. Well, I really think the Holy Spirit um, this morning is wanting to break through the ideas that we have about our own artfulness and creativity. And I want to emphasise that this message is not just for someone like me. I think I'm a creative person as well. It's not just for the people who feel like they're creative people. Um, so if you don't think that's you, it doesn't matter whether you answered or not, because I know you answered in your head when I asked the question. So don't check out if you feel like you can't really relate to this right now. This message is for every created in God's image person. That is all of us. So today I'm basically going through a whole overview of the Bible and how we are called into God's plan and how we can and must use our God-given creativity to fulfill what God calls us to do. So we're going to start at the beginning, of course. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. I love how the Bible starts. And I also want us to participate in this. I would love for us all to speak out the first verse on the count of three of the Bible. Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. Yeah. So even though that has to be one of the most well-known verses of the Bible, I don't think we talk enough about how the very first thing we see God doing is creating. The fifth word of the whole Bible, the very first verb, is created. And I love that this is a verse that doesn't change much with different translations, which is how we're able to all speak it out like that, just depending, doesn't matter which translation you use, that verse actually stays very much the same. We learn two things basic, mostly in this verse. The first one is that God was there at the beginning. The second is that he created. This is huge. It's a huge way to start the Bible. But what's special about that Extra special is that God made us in his image, as we saw in the scripture reading. He made us male and female with his nature and in his likeness. And what is the very first thing that humankind is commanded to do, the very first task we're given, it's to create. Um, Genesis 1, 28, um, it's being fruitful. God calls us to be fruitful. What is being fruitful? It's procreation, creating people. If you don't think you're a creative person, but you have children, then you've already fulfilled that first mission that God gave to humanity. And if you don't have children, it doesn't matter, because that's only one way that we are creative. Um, we fulfill our mission from God by being creative. We see in Genesis chapter 2, God gives Adam the task of naming all the animals. After he'd gone through and done everything else, God did not need Adam to name the animals. He could have easily done that himself, yet he gave Adam the privilege anyway. Why? Because God must really care about us 
being able to express our God-given creativity that comes from his nature that we are made with. We are commanded to reflect our creative father. In the creation account, we see God creating the perfect place, the perfect kingdom in Eden. And as we know, that's quickly spoiled by humanity choosing self over God. And then the whole Bible is a story about God creating and bringing about a long-term solution of redemption to himself. He eventually came to earth um, in the human form of Jesus to redeem humanity to himself by dying and rising again on the cross all through grace alone, from nothing that we've done, but all from himself. And that's where we are in the story. And eventually he will come and return to earth and destroy sin and death once and for all and establish, be established as king over the earth. And he will establish a new heaven and a new earth, which we see in Revelation 21, verses one to three. The writer of this, John, um, is talking about in a vision that he got from God. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and will be their God. This creating began with God creating the perfect kingdom. And the story has not ended yet, but will end with God establishing the perfect kingdom here on earth to, that will reign forever without end. So that whole rundown of the Bible basically is to say that when God creates, he's bringing his kingdom. That's what he's doing. Therefore, as image bearers of God, we have the power from the Holy Spirit to also bring his kingdom when we create. This power is given to all of us as believers, not just spiritual people, all of us. And that's our God-given mission while we're here, is to bring God's kingdom to earth. So what does that look like? What does it mean to advance the kingdom of God? I think first we need to look at what the kingdom of God is. I always like to, when I'm preaching or um, giving a message or something, to really take a step back from these things that we often talk about in church or Christianese words or something, some things that we can just talk about it so much that we kind of even need a refresher of what it looks like or we need to dive deep into it. To know how to advance the kingdom of God, I think we need to look at what is the kingdom of God. It's many things. I think the first most important one is it is the presence of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, when the birth of Jesus is foretold, it um, tells about how when Jesus comes, that's when his kingdom is. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on until forever. Jesus is both the King of the kingdom and he's the full manifestation of it. The kingdom of God is his rule and reign. It's not just a physical place uh, where boundaries are or where a group of people are, like a country, how we think of it. It is his practical authority over our lives. In Matthew 13, verses 47, uh, Jesus is telling a parable about the kingdom of God and he talks about how it's like a net that is let down into a lake and catches all kinds of fish. When in that parable, the word he uses for kingdom doesn't primarily refer to the place or the people, but describes the power of a king reigning. It is the describing the action. In saying that, the kingdom of God is a real place. It is a spiritual realm where God's rule is in perfect order and it's transferable here. 
Fourth thing, the kingdom of God is also on a mission. We see this with the Great Commission. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus gives the, um, the Great Commission to the disciples. After his death and resurrection, he appears to them and he tell, it tells of how Jesus came for a purpose and calls us to be on that mission with him. To make disciples of all nations and baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And that's what Jesus says. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we advance the kingdom of God largely by being like Christ and pursuing his mission. It is a heart matter, heart matter that's present in people's lives through the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 14 verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Bringing the kingdom to earth is living heaven's culture. And the Bible is full of what heaven's culture is. That's what God was downloading to people, to the writers of um, particularly the New Testament. It's heaven's culture that he's teaching us, that he wants us to learn and to live. Um, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 verse, through to chapter 7 that Jesus teaches, it's probably the most concise single teaching of heaven's culture that we've got. Being creative is one of the ways we advance the kingdom of God and portray that heavenly culture and those heavenly realities. The Bible is full of this, with the creation of the Ark of the Covenant and the tabernacle and then later the temple in the Old Testament. These were made to be visual, representation of, visual representations of heavenly realities. Jesus himself taught heavenly realities in his creative stories that he taught, the parables. Matthew chapter 13, like I've already mentioned, that chapter is full of Jesus teaching parables about the kingdom of God. And we see in Mark chapter 4 verse 30, Jesus is thinking of a way to explain what he knew to be real and true in heaven. The Bible shows many ways we advance his kingdom and bring heavenly realities to earth. People used procreation, architecture, design, leadership, poetry, music, made up stories like parables, conversations, etc., etc., to bring the reality of heaven's way to earth. I'm sure many of these people did not think of themselves as artists or even creative at all. That's why we also must dispel the idea that creativity is simply visual art or musical art or creative writing arts. Creativity is about being a creator. It is about us reflecting our creative father, fulfilling the mission that he gave to each of us who love him and ushering his kingdom by portraying those heavenly realities. I'm going to repeat that. Creativity is us reflecting our creative father, fulfilling the mission he has commanded of each of us who love him and ushering his kingdom by portraying those heavenly realities. It's loud. <laughs> So we know, though, that a lot of creativity in the world does not bring God's kingdom. It's evident to see. That is because the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, as it says in John 10 verse 10. Satan does not have his own creative power because that's God, God's. All he can do is twist the creation in us and the creativity of people and twist their hearts away from God and his design, and it leads many astray. And some of the research I was doing for this message, I was reading a passage about someone who was saying that um, art, in particular, is always about a who, more so than a what. And it's either about um, God, the devil, or ourselves. For many people, it's about ourselves, and it's an expression of self only. But if God is in us, if his nature is in us, then when we are expressing ourselves, we should also be expressing God. I want to share this quote that's from a collection of essays about creativity 
from God. This one's from Tony Knight. He says, the God who spoke the world into existence and created us is the same God who calls us to ministry, personally commissioned by Jesus to go into the world to make disciples. Paul calls us to join with him in the ministry of reconciliation. To put it another way, we are invited to use our creative impulses to counter the destructive impulses of Satan through the power of our creator, God. Creativity is a gift to us, but it is also God's mission to us. We know that Satan tries to twist our creative impulses away from being an act of worship and reflection of our creative God and transform them into a self-serving thing. But we can even use our creativity to counteract the attacks of the enemy. We can use creativity to turn a negative feeling or situation into something that brings God glory. In, um, throughout 2019 and, and 2020, when we were going through a particularly hard time, Throughout that time, I wrote a poem, I call it my sad poem, that I would go back to every few days or few weeks, and I'd just add bits to it. And at the time, I just thought it was me writing down words on paper that I know didn't make any sense, and it still doesn't. But I understand now that the Holy Spirit was actually guiding me through every word that I wrote. God was directing me to use my negative um, emotions and my negative situation in a helpful way. Even though that poem is full of heartbreak, God used my creative impulses to counteract the destructive impulses of Satan that would seek for me to wallow in self-despair and hopelessness. It was a way for me to healthily deal with the things I was going through. And that's just one example of a way that God can use our creativity to do that. And even though that uh, poem isn't for anyone else and it hasn't been seen by anyone else, it still brings God glory for what it did in my heart. Do you still tr struggle to connect with what I'm saying because you're not a creative person? Then know that every sentence you speak creates something. Is it then advancing God's kingdom or not? Creativity should not simply be an expression of oneself, it should express God. So how do we do that? How do we creatively express God? Here come the three points. Got to have the three points. The first way we can do that is to know God's heart and his promises and his word. Know that you have God's Holy Spirit power in you. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 13. This is a really meaty passage, but I'm going to read it out. Verses 10 to 13, did I say that? The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The Spirit of God knows the heart of God and indwells you and allows you to use his power to bring the kingdom of God by portraying those heavenly realities on earth. Once we know that, we can maybe breathe a sigh of relief when we know that that urge to create that is in each of us to make something or cook something, to build something, it is God-given. And we know that we don't always use that God-given gift for God's serving purposes, but it is from him nonetheless. The second thing we can do to express, creatively express God is to simply ask his direction. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 8, this is part of Jesus' sermon on the mount. And he says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. We simply need to ask him to advance his kingdom through us. 
it's simple, but I think so often we just forget to talk to God and ask him to, moment by moment, advance his kingdom through us, to speak through us. I know I forget through the day, but I find that when I do stop and I ask God, ask for his Holy Spirit to speak through what I'm saying, not just in big times like this, but in every sentence, it is evident. We need to dedicate our work and our job to God, not just once, but every day. Ask him to speak through you and reveal his heart to you, and then draw, cook, lead, build, design, write, drive, garden. Do business work that portrays that heart and reveals the heart of Jesus to the world. Whatever you do to fill each day, whether it seems creative or not, it has the power to advance God's kingdom. And that's exactly what creativity is designed to be. It's what God does when he's creative. The third thing we can do is we have to give our activities to him. Give your activities to God every day and moment by moment in prayer and he will use his spirit to advance his kingdom in you. I love this verse in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. It says, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, that doesn't leave any room for anything. Night or day, 24-7, whatever we do, we should be doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus. That means that everything can be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everything has the power to advance his kingdom. Could I have the music team come back up, please? All of these things, creatively expressing God, knowing him, asking his direction and giving our activities to him, it can all be done through prayer, reading his word, talking with others about him and asking him to reveal his heart to you, specifically asking him that, taking the time every time you remember. And then the big thing is obeying his command to create. We have to also act on it as well. And that could be creating anything, even as simple as creating a warm and welcoming and loving atmosphere in your home. It all creates something. The purpose of creation is to bring God glory and to bring and reveal his kingdom. Does the creative spark in you and the creation that your tongue and your mind bring forth every day advance his kingdom? If it does, then dedicate it again to him now. And if it doesn't, then declare again, or for the first time, Jesus as not only your saviour, but also as your Lord, and dedicate your heart and the pursuits of your hands and your mind to him. And know that the battle is already won. I just want to end in prayer with that as well. Lord Jesus, we thank you that the battle is won. We thank you by grace alone. We come and we have your presence. Thank you that you are enough. I ask that any walls that remain um, up between our hearts and yours, Lord, that you will be dismantling them, softening hearts. Pray that you will humble us. Help us to dedicate our work to you. We know, Lord, that you created the heavens and the earth. You created us in your likeness. We are made to be like you, to reflect you. We know that everything we do has the power to bring your kingdom, to advance your kingdom. We pray that you will remind us by that, of that moment by moment. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. Amen.